Black Lives Matter is inviting us to imagine that a different way is possible. It's inviting us to imagine another world whereby we don't measure the worth of a person based on their race and based on their proximity to power. To take seriously the call and the demand that Black Lives Matter is to make sure that we hear it everywhere. We've been witnessing um, a lot of people crossing the Mediterranean route, a lot of boats in distress, and the European states refused to assist those people. So what they have been doing is they've gone out to train the so-called Libyan Coast Guard, give them all the vessels from the Italian Coast Guard to pull back these people, to then put them in detention centers. And they're exploiting them to massive human rights violations. When I hear the EU commissioners say there's no racism in Europe because we don't have a history of slavery, it's like, this is happening at your doorstep. It's really important for people to make the connection between the carceral state and the racist dimensions of that. Whose freedom gets constricted? This mix of IOM, ICR, as well as the European Union, claim to or portend to protect these fundamental rights but actually have served to undermine them. The idea of the lives and dignity of people is largely absent. As the statues begin to topple, those people are sitting by and allowing black and brown people to literally drown in front of our eyes. One of the slogans from the Black Lives Matter is, of course, we say their name. And then when we look at the Mediterranean, we don't even know the names. They're nameless and faceless. My name is uh, Hassan Zakaria Omar. I am Sudanese. I lost uh, two of my brothers in the war in 2011. I have come illegally to Libya through this desert. They took me to the prison. Police telling us to smuggle out. If you are not paying, you're going to go to Horrendous sexuality issues. In April, exactly the war has started. It was so hard, hard to believe that you're are gonna be alive. I'm trying to run away. They are shutting people behind us. Just people mean to kill people because they are black people. When I entered the store, he closed it behind and he told me that you need to pay for me $1,000. If you aren't, I will shut you and I will throw you in the Mediterranean. The Libyan Coast Guard shot the boat. Seven persons in the water. I hear, just please save us. We don't need to die. The Libyan people live them. George Floyd has been murdered in U.S. The whole nation is starting a new revolution. Here we have every day a black person dying between white hands. Where does that leave people like Hassan when, you know, there's national government has failed them, regional governments don't have the institutional power, international institutions are importing this carceral discourse that actually is the root cause of all the harm that these vulnerable people are having to deal with. The reckoning of the imperial past is not the physical statues by themselves, but actually to start talking about how the global south developed the global north wealth has been generated through the exploitation of people. That's also part of this black life story we've got to tell. Half the world lives on less than five dollars a day because we've created an economic model that does that. Another 420 million people in the global side are going to be pushed into extreme poverty. We're in a moment of permanent crisis. The multiple crises that are impacting the global side, whether it's conflict, whether it's climate, whether it's inequality, are not only immense now, but of course are going to get much, much worse. If you put yourself in a sea, that means you're losing hope from everything behind. We scared from our home because of insecurity issues. And now we face it here. Many people, many vulnerable people need help. I am one of them.
How do we give people the right not to move? Because many people, of course, as we know, are forcibly displaced. The right not to move is the fight for economic equality. And that gives us an ability to rebuild internationalism so that the fight around migrant justice is not seen as a separate fight to the fights that many people are engaging in their own domestic nation state. That begins to connect these issues and begins to actually start to say, what is the systems of oppression and how do we tackle what those systems of oppression are? That gives us the ability to be able to connect neoliberalism, climate, survival migration, and the historical exploitation of the global south.